Hey and welcome back to the Wonders of Watercolour where today I'm going to show you how to paint this beautiful hellebore in watercolour using easy to follow steps so that you can really level up on your watercolour game. Without any further ado, let's do it. So before we dive into this tutorial, let me do a really quick material run through. The paper I'm using is De La Rowney 169 pounds mixed media paper. The paints I'm using are Windsor and Neat. The brush I'm using is a number three size spotter from Rosemary & Co, but use any brushes that you have. My color chart, which I will explain in a second. I am working from a reference photograph, which you will see at the top of your screen right now, but I'll put the reference photograph and the line drawing that you see here in the Facebook group, The Wonders of Watercolor, which I will put in the link below. As you can see, I always begin with a really simple line drawing. And if you look at the information card on the top of your screen right now, this will show you how I trace down my drawings ready to paint. The first color is olive green. And um, this is olive green with a little bit of transparent yellow. So the first color here is the mix with the yellow tone in and I'm applying this straight to the stalk. I'm going to paint the green colors in first of all, because it helps with color assessment once you've got the darker colors in. Watercolor is all about adding layers. Now going back to my color chart that I mentioned at the beginning, here is how I match my colors to my painting. If you'd like to know how I did this color chart and how I match my colors up, there's an information card on the top of your screen right now, which will show you how I did it. Just applying this really, really quickly as a base tone to the leaves, which will need building up later. And I'm going to continue this process in time-lapse. This is a botanical piece and traditionally botanical paintings are done on a white background as we've got here. If you look at the top of your screen right now, I've shown you how you can apply a different colour background to your paintings if you just want to see what it looks like before you commit to painting. If you stick around until the end of this video, I'm going to share with you my hack on how I made this happen. So hellebores are synonymous with spring and the, the start of new beginnings. So they are kind of one of my favorite spring flowers along with the snowdrops that I've done recently. Let me know what your favorite flowers are. So drop that in the comment box below. And now I'm going to go to a bit of sap green with a bit of either Perilean green or Payne's Grey. And I'm going to add these to the olive green that we had. Second, but going back to the darker green mix here, and again, negatively painting, is we really do quite simply paint around a space to create the line here. In this case, it's the middle central vein of this leaf here. So negative painting really isn't that difficult. Before I add some grey tones, I'm just adding some water. If you just put a water glaze on to the paint that you've applied, it really does help with the blurring process. Again, just moving that paint around, really, really good tip. Just use plain water to blur your edges. By going back to the original mix that I had, which is transparent yellow with a little bit of olive, I'm now going to look at these petals in turn and just add some of this yellow tone on top of the green tone that I've painted. And you can see how that's given that dimension. On this petal here, there's a tiny bit of yellow. So I'm just gonna add that there and a bit more green on this top petal here. This petal here, again, we're going back to negative painting. I'm applying this paint, leaving a gap like that, and then just wiggling this paint down. This is not a solid color here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a stipple in motion just to create some texture and darkening up any areas in between the petals with the green tone mixed in with a little bit of yellow. Now the paint spray here is very, very watery. And I'm going to just add a tiny bit of green to that, just to take the blueiness out. A little bit of pigment on the outside edge, like that. And then with a clean brush, just blur that in. And that's really, really easy to do, particularly on this mixed media paper. And I'm going to continue this speed it up. All these little bits here, I'm just going to put a plain wash of Naples yellow. This is a creamy, yellowy colour that we can just pop on here to all of these. And now that the grey tone has dried, we can start to build up that. So another layer, 
and we don't want to go all the way and just go through your plant bit by bit to add the darker tones. This gives more form to your plant as well as the correct colour. I'm going to speed this up. I'd like to put some detail in here, that, here and there. Now that this paint has dried on my palette, I'm going to pick up some of the green tone and using a, a small size brush, I'm using a number one size series seven miniature from Windsor and Newton. Use any brush that you have. What I'd like to do now is start to put some detail and sharpen up some of the edges here and there. For example, I've lost the central vein a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm using the tip of the brush to enhance these little spikes here. Picking up my pigment and outlining that little area that we've lost like this. You see how that's sharpening up any areas that need defining. What I also like to do at this stage is really sharpen any edges and I'm going around that central vein just to add your finer details and just go in with your paint Take your time and assess all your areas one by one and think about if there's anything that needs darkening or sharpening up. And sharpening up where we hit the plant, the leaf hits the petal right there. I'm going to add some perillion green in quite a thickish form. At this stage of your painting you can add some thicker mixes. We don't want thicker mixes at the beginning and the reason why if you do that, what will happen is your paint will become muddy. And just go through bit by bit and anything that you feel needs adjusting, now you can just do your final tweaks. If you can remember at the very beginning of this tutorial, I told you that I had a little hack to share with you that's really, really useful. So imagine that you want to paint a white flower with a different color background and you're not sure how it's going to look. By using this simple editing tool and this really simple hack, you can see how your finished painting would look without having to worry about spoiling your painting before you go any further. The app is only available for iOS, which is an Apple device, but I'm going to show you on the information card that is on your screen right now. If you click through to that, I will explain to you how I created this editing hack to make your photographs ready to paint. So whether you want a, a darker background to see how it looks, or whether you just simply want to remove the background as I have here to make your color assessment easier. And of course with white flowers, making that background disappear is key. But I'm going to put the reference photograph and the line drawing if you want to trace it down in the Facebook group, which I will put in the description box below. And remember to drop down in the description box your favorite flower, because I may just paint it for you and show you how to do it. I'd like to just toughen up this edge here, add this little bit of detail. And in the center, I would like to go around one or two of these and negatively paint around these stamen and anther, just to make them jump out a little bit more. Add a bit of burnt umber if you want to. You can add a little bit of shape here and there too if you want to. I'm going to switch to my number six brush and I'm going to glaze all over with plain water which gives it a lovely unified look. Just plain water over the entire thing and it'll just merge those colours together. I'm just using a really light touch. So now I'm going to hand you back over to me. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any new episodes coming out every Tuesday. But there's more. This video on your screen right now is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to paint this beautiful leaf in watercolour. So click on that link and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching.